Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today's story is about top 10 fails of CCTV installations and how to avoid them, which is the most important thing here. So if you are a new installer, if you are installing a lot of things, if you are just trying to do some first steps in the CCTV installation, that will be definitely really important for you. So this knowledge will bring you a lot of, you know, peace of mind, a lot of money and a lot of happy customers. So because this story will save your nerves and money for sure. And your customers will be happy on the long run. So not only the first day after the installation, but I think it will be many years after that. So today we will uh, talk about the uh, top 10 fails. It will be from number one to number 10. So it's not about the importance. It will be mostly about how frequently you can face with this kind of issues. And we're just starting. The number one fail is DHCP. DHCP is kind of tricky thing, which is related to the IP camera systems and definitely uh, some new installers or some guys who is having a kind of electrical or locksmith background who is not so much skilled in the IT things. So they are make those fail quite often. And uh, you can find out that the ACP of the IP cameras can be still on after you add that to the NVR, what, which is not right. So basically on the wrong, uh, let's say a scenario, First, you can connect IP camera to the NVR. The ACP on most of the cameras on the market now is uh, switched to on. And then uh, you just uh, trying to search and add this camera to the NVR. And after that, you would just leave it like that. So in most cases, it won't be any problem like that. But in some cases, when there is a kind of not native connection, and uh, anyways, it's good to have this uh, the ACP off, why? Because when the router is rebooting or when the router is renewing the DHCP system uh, and uh, basically the router is renewing all the IPs, uh, IP addresses of the network devices in your LAN. So basically in this scenario, your camera will be with a different IP address. And when you bin the IP address of the camera to your NVR and the connection is by the IP address only. So after that, you will see the black screen on your NVR instead of the camera image. Why? Because the camera now with a different IP address and your NVR simply doesn't recognize this camera with the new IP address. So what you have to do then, you have to go to the uh, site or connect remotely to the NVR and try to add the camera with the new IP address again. So to avoid this uh, kind of issue and uh, inconvenient situation, so the best way is to connect the camera with the HCP on to your device, to your NVR, first of all. Then you can go to the camera directly, do some settings, whatever you need. And after you're finishing, just turn the ACP off. So it will save your nerves and save your time and save your customers' uh, emotions, let's say. So they will be only positive because they will see the cameras all the time and uh, not any camera will just run out of the screen and uh, bring you the black screen instead of the color picture. The fail number two is about the old firmware and the password. The problem here is when you're not uploading the latest firmware, first of all, you can miss some important updates or even some critical updates. So in our company, in Partizan, so most, most probably you will have some new firmware once at uh, two, three months. Sometimes it's even faster. So basically what you have to do is make sure always your devices are using the latest firmware possible at the moment. So basically we do recommend to check your firmware uh, status at least one time per six months and better if one time per one quarter. So uh, one time per three months or at least every month if you have some possibility for that, but not later than six months, because definitely in most cases it will be something new for you, which will either improve the speed of the connection to your camera system, or it will, uh, you know, uh, change and improve some critical things, or it will make some uh, protection of your system stronger. So definitely it will bring some uh, good advantages and some new improvements. It's always free of charge. So you are not uh, losing anything if you can just uh, check your firmware update once it's possible for you. So basically uh, the good recommendation if you're facing with some problems or issues or functioning of your system. So the first thing what you have to do is just to check if you have a later firmware for your cameras or for your NVR or any other recorder. So basically you can start from this one. 
now we made our freeware update even easier and even faster. So you are able to make it through the mobile application. So if you don't have a laptop with you, so you just connect into your system with our mobile application. And in our mobile application, you are just, uh, you know, uh, checking the uh, status of your firmware. So basically you will see if you need to upgrade something or if it's fine enough and uh, the firmware is up to date. So just don't forget about that. Check it frequently and you will have some up-to-date devices which will be functioning quite well and good. About the password, uh, the situation is quite similar, uh, but this is only one time. So make sure that your password is strong enough because uh, in all the cases, the system which you're getting from the, cust uh, from the installers are having some default passwords, which is admin admin or admin empty password or admin one, two, three, four, five, six, or something that's similar. So it's quite weak password. So knowing your password, which is uh, quite easy to understand just uh, by trying some uh, basic passwords and seeing your device in the lo local area network, for example, for your neighbors or for your, uh, let's say, internet service provider or for the hackers as well. So it's quite easy task just to enter to your system without your prompt and without your even knowledge. So basically, your system could be hacked within any big efforts. So due to that, just change the password because due to unchanged password uh, at the CCTV device, it can be easily viewed by an authorized person or it can participate in some botnet or some other things, which is really not good at all. So up to 70% of private CCTV users who are buying from the DIY uh, platform, such as eBay, Amazon, and so on, they're just keeping the passwords the same like it was by default. So that means they are really struggling from the uh, low level of security of their system. But hey, you're buying the security system. And when you're buying the security system, and especially when you're ordering some professional service from the installers, so make sure the installer is changing the password to some special one with, the, let's say, different uh, letters, numbers, and so on. So your system will be well protected anyways. Fail number three, it's a time synchronization problem. So this situation can happen if you have, for example, cameras and you have an NVR. So the camera doesn't know what is the time at your time zone at the moment. So what you have to do is just to synchronize your camera somehow with your NVR first, and then your NVR you have to synchronize with our cloud. So of course there is a different and multiple ways how to synchronize the time uh, with your local time, which you do prefer, but we do recommend the easiest possible way for you and uh, basically for the installation. So once you have done your system, so the proper things and the proper setting should be like that. So you have the cameras, the cameras have to be set it to synchronize the time with the NVR or with the recorder you have. And now we are talking about the IP system only because for the AHD, there is no problem with the camera synchronization because they will be just connected directly to the recorder, that's all. So about the IP system, that's more complicated situation. And here you are synchronizing the IP cameras with the NVR first of all, and then you are adding the NVR to the cloud. So you have to register your own account in the partisan cloud. And basically you can do it for you if you are end customer, or you can make it for the customer if you are installer. And finally, uh, you will have your system synchronized because when you add in some device to our cloud, so our cloud will recognize your time zone according to your phone time and everything like that. You can set it there and then it will be synchronized automatically, including some time sh changes from summertime to the winter time and vice versa. So you would, you didn't have to have any hassle anymore. So basically our partisan cloud platform will do all the needful from your side. So it, it's, it's all like uh, automated and it's all very easy. So basically uh, you will have to enjoy your system and uh, never bother yourself about what is the time, is it synchronized or not, if it's shifted or not. So finally you will see the nice image and uh, the time on the playback will be always correct. Fail number four, configuration, connecting and recording. So when we are talking about the system, so the most probably you will, you will be aware about some different uh, options with the recording. So you can record by schedule, you can do the manual recording, you can uh, record by the 
uh, motion detection and so on and so on and so on. So when you install in some system, please don't forget to make some proper settings of your recording because otherwise it can end up with uh, no recording at all. So if you don't record or if you don't set up properly this recording function, there is a big risk of having some improper uh, recording or uh, unable to playback something and so on. So make sure you are going to the recording configuration and spend a couple of minutes there just playing and just setting everything right. So basically you can choose some days, some time if you need the schedule and just make it regular by detection, by the alarm if you like, or all of them all together. So it means it will be 24 seven recording plus it will show you some uh, motion detection moments. So it will be easy for you just to jump from event to event, which is quite nice in my opinion. The second possible issue is how do you connect the cameras? Because if you have our cloud series of the cameras, it's good to connect them by the native protocol. So also you can connect them by the OnRef as well. But if you have a third party cameras, like cameras of other brands or non-cloud cameras with our, let's say cloud camera, uh, cloud NVRs. So in this way, uh, the good thing is uh, to connect by the OnRef protocol because always in all of the recorders, you have a two options, native protocol or OnRef protocol. So all our recorders uh, basically support OnRef protocol, but not all our recorders support some uh, native protocols. So that's why we do recommend to use cloud cameras with the cloud NVRs and SA series cameras with the SA series NVRs. Uh, so that will be working by the native protocol. Otherwise, please make sure you're using only protocol to connect cameras with the recorder. One more tricky thing is about the connection to the clouds. Unfortunately, now uh, due to the technology limitation, for example, in the web browsers and uh, some, uh, uh, let's say, streaming services and so on, uh, the new codec of H.265 are not supported by many services and many apps which is serving the cloud infrastructure. So that's why if you have a cameras, especially the new series of the cameras, 2 megapixel, 5 megapixel, 8 megapixel especially, so uh, definitely you will have by default this H.265 codec uh, setting on the camera. So sometimes uh, customers are really struggling to see the image because they're connecting the camera with this codec to the cloud directly and they see the black image. So they start to connect in our technical support and asking why is that? And finally it ends up like they just have to switch the codec to the H264 and with the H264 it starts working normally. So you have to divide two stories. If you connect the camera to the NVR, you can keep H265, that's fine. And th it will save a lot of space because this uh, uh, basically protocol of the um, uh, jamming of the video stream is much more efficient. So it, it's uh, really with the same quality it requires much more or less space on the hard drive, for example. But if you are just up to connect camera directly to the cloud, make sure it will be H264 protocol and the codec. So that is important thing. And you have to understand that and remember that. That will save you also some time, nerves and everything like that. And you, you can make an up, up and running of the system from the first attempt, which is more important. Pair number five, poor camera fitting. So left side is a bad idea because here you can see a lot of uh, common mistakes, which made by, uh, you know, uh, some uh, new installers who are just starting their way uh, to the professional CCTV business. So basically they're using some improper boxes because this is electrical boxes. This is never CCTV boxes. So they're quite cheap, which is really attracting the new, uh, you know, the new players on the installation. But um, a part of the cheap price, they didn't have any big advantages comparing to the professional back boxes or professional fitting. So basically you can see that the, a lot of cables are not hidden and uh, the camera is basically installed on the electrical pole, which is also a really bad idea because electrical interference will affect the image quality of the camera. So there is a lot of different cables, high voltage cables and everything like that. So all of that will really make your camera struggling with the nice image quality and everything. So on the right hand, you can see the cameras are used with the professional back boxes. So you can uh, really connect all the cables, do some connections and everything inside. So 
no any single cable are visible here. So just remember, if you want to make some neat and clean installation, the cable should be hidden 100%. So there shouldn't be any sign of the cable out there. So all the cables you can hide either inside of the wall or in some special tube or something like that, but never it should be out of the back box or should be visible by anyone outside of the uh, building or premise you are fitting the camera system. Fail number six, wrong viewing angle or installation place of the camera. Here is really a lot of different problems which you can face with. So starting from the reflection, for example, if you're installing the camera during the day and basically your camera is looking at some kind of a tree or lamppost or wall or something like that, what does it mean? It means at the nighttime, the IR of the camera will be just reflecting from this big obstacle and basically the camera will blind itself. So really you have to make sure that the camera view is directly to some, you know, uh, free space and uh, the basically IR light will not reflect itself from uh, some other parts. So in the best condition, it's good to understand that. And if you are not sure, so just control what is going on at the nighttime and then maybe you can adjust something. Then the next thing, uh, when the sun is uh, rising and the setting down, so also the sun, which is quite a bright thing, it can blind the camera. So please try to avoid to install the camera on a direction when the sun is going up and going down. So it's really important in some cases because uh, it could make your camera blind for a couple of hours, which is uh, really a bad idea. And uh, it can left the uh, basically whole, um, whole place without the uh, proper level of security, which is not good. Second one, if you're using the camera, which is having a glass, uh, such as a speed domes, for example, PTZ cameras we have, and some uh, really glass domes we have, it's just a couple of models, but still is there. So, there will be reflection if you are not clean this uh, glass part. So basically you have to, after you finish the fitting, you have to clean this glass part from the inside and outside and better to use some special gloves, which will not uh, left some uh, fingerprints on the body of this glass part. So also within certain time, like after one, two months, it's good to make some service because uh, camera glass might become dirty. And the, finally, again, the IR, uh, could reflect from these dirty parts or some scratches or something like that and the camera could blind itself which is also like i said it's not a good idea at all and it will uh, affect the quality of the whole system now about the wrong placing of the camera first of all uh, try never place the camera on uh, some uh, basically metal surfaces why because the camera is metal itself like you see here for example this is the metal camera and when you place the camera to the metal surface and this metal surface will be connected to some electrical things or uh, they might have some uh, basically uh, problems with the immerse lightning current or something like that. So it could be electrical interference or something. So basically from the physical point of view, there could be a lot of different uh, risky things which can affect your camera starting from the some waves on the screen if it's ahd camera and ending up uh, the, the the whole camera can burn because of the uh, big uh, jump of the electric uh, electrical waves uh, related to this uh, basically a metal surface so how to avoid that we have a couple of ideas first of all we have a special back boxes which is made from a special plastic which is automotive grade plastic so it's kind of robust uh, it's kind of um, weatherproof waterproof uh, and everything like that so it's quite nice if you are talking about the camera solution so basically it looks like that so the camera is small and this device and the back box is really a small and spacey so you can basically put inside all the cabling make some nice connection and due to that this is the metal camera this is the plastic and then it's metal and it's never connected between metal and metal because you have this dielectric part so basically it will be safe to install the camera like this on any metal surface, but please do not install it directly. 
even with the specialized back boxes, which is in most cases metal. So if you want to install the camera to the metal surface, please use these dielectric special cases, which were manufactured here in Prague in Czech Republic. So we call it PMB 120. We have it in a white color. We have it on a black color. We have it uh, different sizes, if you like and basically they are ready to order anytime you need them. Then uh, if camera installed too low uh, at a too low height, it could be a high risk of a vandalism, theft or some advantage uh, adjustment of the camera because someone can just, you know, replace the camera like this and you will see nothing, okay? So make sure that your camera is uh, placed on high at least uh, maybe three and, uh, three and five meters. So I, I will not be able having my height around one, uh, one and eight. So I will be not able to touch this camera with my hand or damage it somehow. So basically uh, the second one, if you have a dome camera like this, it's really good idea just to place this camera under the roof. So not on some open space when the snow will be falling here. And finally it will be a big, uh, really snow uh, hill on, on the camera. So camera will not see anything. So it's good to put the camera under some roof so camera will be protected and will be possible to see nice image quality during all the year and all the weather conditions you, you might have at your place. Then uh, if the camera installed were close to the high voltage cable lines it's also a bad idea because it can, uh, it can really affect or damage the camera uh, due to the, some electrical interference. So here you can see some nice examples how, how to install the camera properly. So on both sides, left and right, you can see the camera is installed on the plastic uh, back box like this. This is the one. Uh, so you don't have to think about what is the surface uh, on the back of the camera. So basically if it's metal or if it's, uh, I don't know, some uh, bricks or something like that. So you just use this plastic box and you're on the safe side, guys. And then uh, when you need to make some cable stretching and you are not able to put the cable inside the wall. So like on the right side, you can use just a specialized pipe to hide all the cable and make some cable connection. Fail number eight, poor internet speed. So here is also a tricky thing because most customers are measuring only download speed. But for the good image quality at your mobile phone in our, in our cloud for having a nice recording, the essential is the upload speed. Because in most cases, you might find you have a quite decent download speed like 100 MB, but really bad and poor upload speed like one or two MB only. So having, uh, let's say the system of four up to eight cameras, if not more, so you will be struggling with this kind of upload because for normal functioning of the system from let's say uh, four and more cameras you have to arrange at least 10 mbs for the upload at least so here you can see the le left side is not proper one when you have a less than 10 mbs for the upload and download and of course it's good to arrange um, the upload and download accordingly to your camera system for example if you have a five megapixel camera system which is four cameras so you have to count at least three to four mb per camera so it will be nice to have at least 10 MBs for all the system. But better is uh, if you have more. So 100 to 100 will be like a really decent and uh, awesome system. So please make sure if you have not enough uh, upload speed so you can connect with your internet provider and ask for the, some higher package because uh, for the CCTV, you really need this. If you are just watching YouTube, if you're just browsing on the websites, so maybe you didn't care about the upload, but once you're trying to install and to use professional CCTV system, especially with the recording to the cloud, definitely you have to make sure that your internet is good enough and on the same level like your system. Fail number eight is the wrong wiring. So like I previously said, it should be some uh, distance from the camera cable to the high voltage cable. So at least it should be 30 centimeters between the camera cable and the high voltage cable, which is two, uh, 220 volts or even more. So it will bring you a good idea about the basically uh, image quality, because if it will be close to each other, so it could reflect, it could be some waves, it could be jumping of the image due to the electrical interference. So easy as that. Now about the long wiring, AHD and IP system, they also have some uh, wire limitations. For example, in AHD, 
uh, it's better to use it for a couple of hundred meters. And for the IP, if it's PoE plus data cables, you need to transfer some power and the data all together. So it's good to have it like uh, 50 to 80 meters because otherwise you will just start losing some power and camera, which is, let's say, 120 meters, 200 meters, could be really not powered enough and uh, it could be not working IR light at the night time or the whole camera image will be uh, really affected. Also make sure that you are using special and uh, proper fast Ethernet standard, which is IEEE 802.3U. This is one specialized for the CCTV system and will be delivering all the proper image quality and everything between the devices in your LAN. Wrong wiring is also touching the power supply. If you're talking about the AHD cameras or if you're trying to power the cameras with the power supply, make sure if the cameras are located on a different distances, so you are using different power supplies for all of them. So it's not that much important for the IP cameras, but it's quite important and really essential for the AHD system or analog system, we call it. So why? Because when you have one power supply, which you just uh, split to a couple of cameras, basically you can use it with our splitters, that's not a problem. But when the camera one will be at the distance, for example, 10 meters from the power supply, and the camera two will be at the distance, for example, 100 meter from the power supply, it will bring you a problem because it might be not enough power to camera two because your basically power supply will be adjusted mostly to the camera number one and the camera number two will try to get more power from the distance but finally it will fail because it will be a bit longer distance than it should be because the power supply will be 12 volts from the beginning and finally it could end up like to the camera number two within the 100 meter from the power supply it will be only like 11, maybe 10 volts from the power supply. So it will bring a big, uh, you know, pressure on the camera components. And finally, you will you will see the problems such as uh, IR lighting, it's uh, start to phase in off. So basically, it could be some IR LEDs are uh, really off and the burning out. So to avoid this situation, it's good to have the cameras separated by the power supply if you have a, such a huge difference with the distances of the installation of the camera. Uh, what should be done next? When you install the camera, put the power supply with the multimeter, you can use and you can uh, measure what kind of power you're receiving on the camera end. So if it's not enough, you can use some specialized power supply where you can just increase the voltage of the power supply. For example, if you have a 12, well, a 12, 12 volts uh, adjustable power supply, uh, it means it could be from the 10 to 15 volts, for example, and you're getting, let's say, closer to the 10 volts on the camera within the 100 meter run. So you can just increase the power on the power supply to the 15 volts. And finally, your camera will get in the 12 volts, which is essential for this camera and which is necessary for this camera. So make sure uh, if you are facing with some problems and, and some, uh, uh, you know, lower uh, power level for the remote camera, so you have to use and uh, install some kind of uh, adjustable power supply where you can adjust, make more or make less of the power if you need that. Wall wiring for the HD cameras is also about the UTP transmitters. So definitely uh, some, you know, uh, new installers they're trying to use more pairs, sometimes because they just have a spare pairs, so why not to use them? And sometimes for some different reason. Yeah, but anyways, uh, don't use two pairs on one transmitter. So if you have a one transmitter, you have to use one pair if you're using this UTP cable and the UTP transmitters. So upper, uh, upper image is uh, wrong because you are just the doubling cables and it make a uh, camera having some bad image. So it could jump, it could be waving and everything like that. So to make sure your camera will be have a nice image quality. So always using one pair. It will save again your money, your time and your customers will be happy. Carry on yourself as a professional. Wrong wiring is also about the quality of the cable itself. 
try to avoid some steel or CCA cable because uh, the quality of that cable is maybe fine enough for some uh, small local area network when you have a one or two PC, but definitely it's not a good idea to use it for the professional security system. So for the professional security system, either I, uh, AHD or IP system, it's better to use CAT5, E or CAT6 copper cable. In this case, you will make sure that the transfer speed and the signal is really stable, is decent, and you have everything you have to do with your system. So basically, there will be no bottleneck uh, in the cable side. So your cable will then transfer everything with your camera giving up to the uh, DVR or NVR. Again, uh, about the cabling, left side is a bed and the pool wiring. So really might be five or 10 years ago, it was really nice installation and the nice cable, no problem with that. But at this moment, it looks really poor because you know, this damaged cable and everything like that can also bring your damaged signal and the damage image quality, which you don't want for sure. At the right side, this is the professional way of installing and the crimping of the cable. So here you can see all the cables are with the special caps, with the special connectors, they're crimped well, and they are named because sometimes you don't remember which camera is uh, which cable. So it's good to have some uh, small and short notice for, for basically um, uh, maintenance, which can happen after a few years uh, from your installation. So basically uh, this kind of professional approach is really good and it takes uh, another, uh, it takes you to another level, like I said. Fail number nine, low quality or improper third party equipment. So here is the biggest risk you can face with is when you're using professional CCTV systems such as a partisan equipment. And finally, you're trying to save some budget using some cheap equipment for let's say internet, power supply or something like that. So it will finally lower down the whole of your system to the lowest possible level because the level of your system is the level of each single component. So if you have a low level components of your system, so immediately your system became a low level system. So make sure if you are using at least middle level system, all the components should be at the middle level. If you are using a high level system, all the components should be on a high level for sure. So not trying to save some budget on the third party equipment, because finally you will end up with the poor uh, performance of the poor connection of the system or maybe even with some, uh, you know, uh, stories when something is not working at all. So basically, when we are talking about uh, some Wi-Fi routers or the internet routers, so we do not recommend to use some cheaper low quality switches because they may be, as again, they may be fine for some home internet when you are not having some uh, load. But uh, if you are if you are talking about the CCTV system. Definitely, you have to arrange yourself with the professional and the good quality equipment, such as a partisan network equipment, Linksys, HP, uh, Microtik, Cisco, Zixel. All of the guys from this level are really fine, and they will bring you proper level of the quality when you when we're talking about the Wi-Fi. Same if we're talking about the PoE switches. So don't use the cheap PoE switches because either it will be not compatible with your system or your cameras or in worst case, it can damage your cameras or your system. So in our case, we do recommend our partisan PoE switch series. We have a four, eight, 16 and 24 channels. So all of them are quite fine. The, all of them are dedicated to the CCTV system. They have a different modes, uh, different ways of connection, different ways of delivering of the power, power and uh, basically video signal. So you won't be disappointed on that. Then if we are talking about the hard drives, this is uh, also essential part of the system because this is the basically <laughs> equipment on which you will record all your recordings. So I'm sure you don't want to you know, lose all your recordings because you invest in a lot of money to the uh, CCTV system. And finally, you want to keep your recording well and stable. So just try to avoid some normal PC hard drives because of course they will be cheaper but there is some specialized and uh, really uh, CCTV approved and uh, basically uh, compatible hard drives on the market. For example, it could be a purple series from the Western Digital. It is surveillance series from the Seagate. And also a partisan is authorized Toshiba distributor. And we'd recommend a Toshiba surveillance series because it's uh, one terabyte, two, four, 
uh, eight and the six terabyte hard drives, different various hard drives, which you might need, but all of them are specially made and dedicated to the 24 seven continuous recording. And uh, they are really good for many years of, uh, you know, uh, working without any problems and uh, keeping your storage and keeping your playback uh, safe and without any problems and harm to equipment. Now, when you're choosing a kind of a POE switch or switch uh, in general, make sure you didn't have a bad bo bottleneck like this, because when you assemble a couple of groups on, of the cameras, one group of the camera here and one there, so it will be eight cameras, each of them, for example, 10 MBs per second. So you use the POE switch, which is 100 MBs. So that's fine. And the second group is the same. But when you're trying to assemble it together, you don't have to use a switch, which is uh, having this kind of limitation because 16 cameras will bring you 160 MBs and 100 MB at your uh, main switch will be not enough. So you have to use a gigabit switch, which will bring you enough uh, bandwidth to deliver it to the NVR because NVR uh, for the more than 16 cameras, normally we have a gigabit. So that's why you have to arrange and calculate properly all the system. And when you're installing something, so like I said, the third party equipment is really important and it really can affect in a good way and on a bad way to all your system. Fail number 10, incorrect power calculation and component quality. So basically, uh, you should keep in mind just only two things. First of all, the pool power supply quality is really can damage and destroy all your system. And you will be returning to your project, to your site, and you will try to do something with your system. But finally, it's always good to have some proper and high quality power supply in any case, because if you will have improper or cheap or some you know, uh, bad level power supply, or incorrect power supply, which cannot adjust, for example, power when you need it, for example. So basically you can face with some image problems. First of all, it could be stripes, it could be waves, it could be no image at all. It could be not working IR light at the nighttime. So basically many, many things which can affect your system quality. So make sure you're using the power supply, which is uh, really nice. And when you're installing something, just don't forget to measure the power, which is close to the camera, because when everything seems fine, when you install it, it could be quite different situation because especially on the long runs, like a 50 meters plus, it could be a high risk of a lower power supply delivered to the camera from the start. So make sure that not only the power supply is uh, proper to the um, equipment features, but also your camera is really delivering and receiving, I mean, uh, the camera is really receiving the proper amount of power which they need. Now, uh, when you're calculating overall the system, so it's good to have some spare power. For example, if you have a four cameras, one amp each one, so it's good to have at least five amp power supply. So you will have this uh, some spare amount of power supply just for some cases, because it could be that uh, basically with the time the power supply is going down with the amount of amps it can uh, give to the cameras. It could be some, let's say, lower level power supply, and then uh, it will be mentioned in 5 amp, but finally it can give only 4 and 5 or just 4 amp and something like that. So just to avoid the situations like that, I do recommend to have extra. So this extra will be buffering your potential problems. So in case if you need just 4, but you're fi buying 5 amp power supply, and it uh, turns up like this power supply is really four amps, not five, like it was mentioned on the box or something like that. So still you will have four amps and you will be at the safe side. So in any case, this spare power supply, when you're calculating all the system will be nothing wrong and would bring additional confidence for you that this system will be working for long years. Then uh, let's say fail without the number, the last but the most important is never go to the uh, to the site and never go to the customer unprepared because I can see that many, many times professional installers or the so-called professional installers, they can go to the site, to the customer without laptop, without some multimeter, without some tools, without some important spare parts like additional uh, POE switch, 
additional power supplies, additional, um, uh, let's say, connectors or something like that. So that's all you have to have with yourself because finally you should have some van or some car. You should have some spare parts with you because, you know, it will help you again to stay on the safe side because if during the installation something will goes wrong, for example, for some accident reason, you will burn the power supply and you will have only one power supply. It means you will have to go back to your house or to your office and take another one and go back. So just to avoid and save the road for yourself, you know, instead of uh, doing that, you have to keep some spare parts, which is most common spare parts with yourself. So even if you will have a couple of, uh, you know, extra cameras with yourself, it will be nothing wrong because if you will feel like a customer needs some additional camera or the customer will ask you for that. So again, you are saving the road, you're saving the time, you're saving the money. And the most important thing, you looks much more professional in the eyes of the customer. So definitely after this kind of installation, when you came 110% prepared, so your customer will appreciate yourself and he will be happy to spread a good word about you. So that's all my dear friends. Please make sure you remember all those, these 10 features. So I will just make it very fast again, just to remind you what was that. So basically fail number one, it was about the ACP. So don't forget to switch off the ACP when you are installing and setting up the IP camera system. The fail number two, make sure your firmware is always up to date and the password is uh, different from the default one. The fail number three, to avoid some time synchronization problem, make sure that your system or your customer system is really added to the partisan cloud account. So it will be synchronized immediately and anytime. So you don't have to hustle yourself anymore about that. Fail number four about the configuration, connecting and recording. So make sure you're not only just connect cables and that's all. So you are spending some time with the setting up the recording part and uh, then you will be uh, confident that the recording is there and the system is recording as uh, per your customer requirements. So basically fail number five is about to avoid the poor camera fitting like this. So it's better to make it properly neat, tidy and looks nice because it will bring you much more, you know, uh, confidence in your system and uh, looks nice, costs nice. So that's the obvious thing. Fail number six is the wrong viewing angle or installation place of the camera. Like I said here, just try to avoid some uh, problems with the interrupting of the camera view, uh, not trying to uh, point your camera to the wall, to the pole, to some tree or something like that, which can affect the IR lightning, first of all. And then uh, when you are choosing where to install the camera, make sure that if it's a kind of a metal surface, you are using the special plastic partisan back box which is made and dedicated for any camera basically because you can see here you can install any camera of the size like this so in this way you will avoid any potential problems for sure fail number seven try to avoid poor internet speed if you have a cctv camera system your internet should be strong enough for the download and the most important for the upload as well because all of the camera system will upload the video stream to the cloud and then it will be recorded to the cloud or it will be sent to your mobile phone, to your laptop and so on. So make sure that the speed of the internet is fine enough. Fail number eight, it's a wrong wiring. So please choose the proper components such as the wiring because the wiring is essential part. It's something which is connecting your camera with your recorder. If this part will be poor, so you will have some bad connection, you will have some bad image, you will have some really, uh, you know, system which is uh, hmm, let's say much 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 more below your expectations fail number nine it's a low quality or improper third-part equipment like i said the level of your system is the level of the lowest level of your component so if you are want to have a higher level components and high level system all of your devices, including the accessories and the third party equipment should be fine enough and should be on a proper level. So make sure you're buying some branded and good equipment for that, which is dedicated for the CCTV system. 
because in most cases, some uh, you know new installers can mix up and trying to use some electrical devices or electrical accessories and to use them with the CCTV, which is uh, completely not good idea in my opinion. There is a separate market and a separate devices which is dedicated for the surveillance market and for the CCTV systems. So please make sure you are using and following th those devices. If you're not sure what to choose, you can always ask our technical support or ourselves or our sales managers. They will always recommend you some best brands and the best devices, which is completely um, compatible with uh, any system, including our system. And the fail number 10 basically is incorrect power calculation and component quality. So if you are using pool power supply or if you calculate it, you know, really tightly, <clears throat> So it can bring you some uh, problems and potential risk of having some issues with the camera itself. So please calculate it fine and make sure it's working good. And again, never ever go to the project or go to the customer without 110% prepared for any installation and any basically situation. So make some uh, basically uh, a checklist for yourself Add there all you have to have with yourself in some installation for the access control for the CCTV and so on, and you will be on the safe side having everything with you, even if your customer don't have something, even if you damage something, even if you have a problem with connecting of something, even if you need to add some extra, you will have it with you and you will be always looks like a really professional guy. So I wish you a good luck and the best installations, nice customers and the really professional CCTV. Partisan is the CCTV brand from the Europe, from the heart of the Europe, basically, from the Prague. We are working for you since 2008 and we are just performing every single year. Have a nice day and bye-bye.